Hey, it's me, Carrie, and there's something I need to say. So let's see what that would look like. Hi guys! Wow, you guys were really upset that I didn't make a KH joke last time. So hi, it's me, Carrie Kaleidoscope Hoarder. <laughs> anyway, this project is an extension of my program that automatically creates YouTube videos with Google Images, which I finished about two weeks ago. As a reminder, the only inputs for this machine were an annotated transcript and an audio file of me reading that transcript. Everything else, meaning all the visuals, were to be generated automatically, as you can see here. This is a test. When I talk about dogs, does the video show pictures of dogs and not cats? If it does, then I will celebrate. Does this double line break cause the images to go in a different direction? If so, then everything is working according to plan. This time though, I don't want a disembodied voice talking to me. I'd rather have a beautifully animated avatar grace me with their presence. Aren't I beautiful? Go away. If you've ever animated yourself, you know that creating a 10 minute animation can take several weeks of work, which just isn't realistic in the fast paced world of YouTube. So let's work smarter, not harder, and get coding. First off, I'm gonna use a new test transcript this time, and a new test audio file. Take a listen. Hi everyone, this is my second test, and this time, I'm testing how well I can lip sync this guy's mouth. At the same time, I'm also going to see if I can change my expressions. You get the idea. So to improve on my Google image video generator, we have three areas to target. Aesthetic, functional, and legal. Long story short, the things we need to do are give it an animatable avatar to use, have that avatar able to lip sync to the given audio file, and stop using images that we don't have the rights to, meaning most Google images. After a couple days of coding, I got all three to work. So let's see it in action, and then I'll explain the details. Again, take a look at the transcript. You don't need to read the whole thing, but get a good idea of what we'd expect the program to produce. Ready? Okay, let's see this machine in action. Remember, I only gave it the audio file and transcript as inputs. It's going to do the rest of all the actual animating. Hi everyone, this is my second test, and this time, I'm testing how well I can lip sync this guy's mouth. At the same time, I'm also going to see if I can change my expressions. So let's get this started. My dog just died. What happened was, my dog was crossing a bridge. Then a stranger came up to him and threw him off the side! The stranger said he did it because he was scared of dogs, but after this, I think dogs need to be afraid of him! So yeah, thanks for listening to my TED talk. The moral of the story is, well, there's no moral of the story. It's just a stupid story, that's what it is. And it's not real. Don't worry everyone, I just made it up. Anyway, that's the end of test number two. Hopefully, everything worked correctly. I'll add more expressions later, but in the meantime, thanks for watching! Pretty good. Too jiggly in my opinion, but that can be fixed later. So now it's time to dive deeper into how I actually solved all three of these problems. But hold on, I'm still using manual lip sync and animation for this video, which is really labor intensive and ain't nobody got time for that. Besides, I already made the tool that can do this process a thousand times faster. So let's turn it on. Is it on? Given by how jiggly my new body is, I think it's on. Okay, back to explaining. As a reminder, we had three areas to target, aesthetic, functional, and legal. For aesthetics, I wanted a new animated avatar, so that means I need to draw some new assets. This avatar should be emotive, so here was my game plan. Choose four different emotions. Each of those has five poses, and each of those has three levels of blinking. And yes, I drew these all with the mouse. I promise one day I'll figure out how to use my Syntic. Update from Future Carry, yeah, I use my Syntic now and it's way easier. I should have done it earlier. But anyway, my hunch is that 
although we should select the correct emotion to convey my message, it actually doesn't matter which of the five poses within that emotion are actually drawn to the screen. So we can essentially randomly pick one of them as long as we don't repeat too many times. As for the mouth assets, well, I'm going to use the same basic 22 mouth assets I used to animate my show Battle for Dream Island. And typically, I only use six basic mouth forms. One for ah, uh, i, and all other open vowels, one for ya and la, one for u and er, one for ma, pa, and ba, one for fa and va, and one for all other consonants, ta, da, ka, ga, tha, the, and so on. Then I have in-betweens to smoothly transition between mouths, and I also have two variants for smiling and frowning. That's it. Are these 22 mouths enough to look convincing? Well, given that out of the roughly 1 trillion times people have witnessed a BFDI lip sync operation, I have only ever received one complaint, I think it'll be good enough. So that's all we have to do regarding aesthetics. On the functional side of things, let's open the machine up again. I want to leave most of these components as they are, but we will have to overhaul this timestamp combiner. Why? Well, let's figure out what it used to do and figure out what I'd rather have it do instead. Originally, Lower Quality's tool called Gentle would listen to the audio file and give us the timestamps of when I said every word of the transcript. But notice this, it doesn't just give timestamps of the spoken words, it also gives timestamps of every single phoneme as well. Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Hi everyone. So previously, my timestamp combiner just took the word timestamps and gave us a timetable for when I was discussing each particular topic. That's a single table to describe the timeline of a single attribute of the video. But with the goal of having a fully lip-synced character on screen, we're gonna need a lot more than just a single attribute. Long story short, this component is no longer the timestamp combiner, but is now the five-way timetable creator. After some simple tweaking, it now gives us a timetable for when each phoneme is being said, a timetable for when the pose should change, which is when any of these characters appear in the transcript, a timetable for when the emotion should change, as denoted by these new greater than less than tags, a timetable for when each topic is being talked about, same as before, and a timetable for when the paragraph changes, as denoted by the double line breaks. All five timetables will come in handy for the video frame drawer to draw its frames. For example, with the phoneme timetable, it knows that image 2763 of the frame sequence needs to have the f mouth on screen, and so on. So then I say, draw frame 1, and the computer can look up what phoneme, pose, emotion, topic, and paragraph are on display at timestamp 1 plops that all on the screen using the Python image library, and saves it to a file. Then I say, draw frame 2, and it does the same. Then I say, draw frame 3, and it does the same. So on and so on, for the roughly 18,000 frames it takes to make a 10 minute video. Also, I saw all your comments last time about getting rid of the smooth transitions, and I listened. Instant jump cuts it is. And that's pretty much it. The video consolidator thingy can stay the same, so our functionality makeover is complete. As for the, um, legal issue, well, some people told me that I can't just plop Google images into my video without getting the rights to those images from their owners first. Now, negotiating those rights defeats the whole purpose of automated videos, and using some sort of Creative Commons library of images is lame. So I decided to do the reasonable thing and swap the Google image requester with the human image requester. This, say, Google, can you give me an image of an oak tree? Has been replaced with this. Hey human, can you give me an image of an oak tree? So I have to draw something that says, hi everyone. I only get 30 seconds. This progress bar is like my time limit and then when that runs out, it's gonna save it automatically. And there's um, no undo in this little paint application I wrote. It's also very laggy, and there's no fill bucket, and you can't change the color. Um, but this is just a workaround 
while I figure out um, what the copyright really is on Google Images and how I can fix that problem. This is my second test. Now there's a stick figure on the left side or right side of the screen. So I don't want to draw another stick figure because then there's two stick figures, but during certain cases like this one, it might make more sense. Oh, I'm running out of time. Um, I think what I'll actually try doing two. Oh, almost. Okay. Barely in the nick of time. Now you may think that the human image requester also defeats the purpose of automated videos, but it's still way faster than animating, and I do plan on swapping it out with something more automatic once I think of a better solution. Fortunately, I now own all the rights to everything this machine produces. Cool. Well, we've covered all three areas that needed improvement, so this video is pretty much done. Bye! Wait, doesn't Kerry need to announce the third letter of his secret channel? No. B but that's the pattern, isn't it? I already told everyone the full name of that channel. What? To cut down on production time by at least 50%. Lazy? Kinda. Hey, but people have done much lazier things. Lazy? Kinda. Hey. Lazy? Kinda. Hey. Lazy? Kinda. Hey. It was right in front of your faces the whole time. No more silly speculation. You guys just had to listen to me when I ask you to listen to me. But yeah, for those unaware, my new channel, which is no longer a secret, is LazyKH. And if there's ever a random video I want to make where I just ramble and create all the visuals with my new automatic lip syncing tool, I'll upload them to LazyKH. Get it? Because it's a lazily made video? Anyway, congrats to Chroma Hero Gaming and Poopy Doopy Doo for being the first two people to discover the channel, before I even hinted at it anywhere. And what? There's now 347 of you? Somebody must be responsible for this indefensible leak. Whatever. If you want to join those 347 and listen to me ramble about vapid life stories to boringly formulaic animations, subscribe to LazyKH. But maybe you'd rather watch unvapid things. Like maybe you'd enjoy learning about how neural networks can allow computers to program themselves, which is a new course from Brilliant. Whether you're a student, a professional learning cutting edge topics, or someone who just wants to understand the world better, you should check out Brilliant. We're all isolated in our homes right now because of the pandemic, so if you're healthy and able, why not work towards learning something you've been meaning to for years? I know a lot of people email me asking where to get started with their AI education, so I recommend here. It's got interactive explorations and a mobile app that makes learning easier than ever. If you want to take it to the next level, then get Brilliant Premium to learn something new every day. Brilliant's thought-provoking math, science, and computer science content helps guide you to mastery by taking complex concepts and breaking them up into bite-sized understandable chunks. Over time, you'll be amazed at what you can accomplish. So go to the link in the description right now to visit Brilliant's website. Update from Future Carry. I know pre-existing software already has automatic lip syncing capabilities, like Anime Studio and I think Adobe Animate as well. However, I personally think that coding this project myself gives me a lot more control over how the synchronization works. For example, the emotions of the avatar and the billboards are also being synchronized and that wouldn't be possible with built-in software. But for me, it's just typing another couple dozen lines of code. Anyway, thanks everyone for watching this video and I'll see you later.